the common five-line skink, Plestiodon fasciatus. So here are some different skink characteristics. They can have a conspicuously colored tail, autotomy of the tail, autotomy meaning that they can voluntarily shed a body part when they are threatened. They can also regenerate their tail. They are oviparous with five to ten eggs in each clutch. Oviparous just meaning that they lay eggs. They must bask in the sun to warm up because they are ectothermic, meaning that they depend on external sources to regulate body temperature. So here we have three different pictures of skinks that have some overlapping range. On the top left we see the common five-line skink. On the right we see the broad-headed skink. And on the bottom we see the southeastern five-line skink. They may look easy to tell apart here, at least from the common five-line skink, but as they age, the common five-line skink can lose the blue in its tail, its stripes can fade, and its head can develop more of that red color. So general identification, which is especially useful with a younger common five-line skink, the juveniles are dark brown to black, with five white or yellow stripes along their body, and they have a bright blue tail. The adults may go through melanization and have lighter blue tails, and the stripes may fade completely. They can grow from 4.9 to 8.5 inches, which is about 12.5 to 21.5 centimeters. So this is the big takeaway from this presentation. There are some very similar species, but at the Virginia Herpetological Society's webpage, there are also very good ways to tell them apart. In this left image, you can see that the common five-line skink and the broad-headed skink have this line of wider scales on the underside of their tail. On the right side of this image, you can see that the southeastern five-line skink has scales that are uniform in size on the underside of its tail. And this image on the right, we can see that the broad-headed skink, if you look at the line of scales on its upper lip, straight down from that front corner of its eye to underneath its nose, you'll count five scales. If you do the same with the common five-line skink, you'll only count four scales. Depending on where you find the skink that you're trying to identify, you might be able to narrow down pretty easily what kind it is but they do have a lot of overlap and range. Though similar in appearance and with some overlapping range, these skinks do exploit different areas of their habitat. The common five-line skink can be found on the ground in partially wooded areas with cover, basking sites, and rocky areas. The broad-headed skink is arboreal. It can be found in urban areas and humid forests with abundant leaf litter, especially oak. The southeastern five-line skink can be found in wooded areas and even islands off the southeastern coast. So this is a good time to talk about the competitive exclusion principle, which states that two species cannot coexist if they occupy the same niche, competing for the same resources. So you can see that these different skinks exploit a little bit of a different habitat even though they might overlap in range. A little bit about their lifespan and photo period. They can live up to six years in the wild and up to 10 years in captivity. Skinks are active during the day. And this picture on the right, at first glance, might look like a broad-headed skink. But if you look below the front corner of the eye and count those scales on the upper lip down to the one underneath the nose, you'll count four. So this is a five-line skink. Their diet is primarily carnivorous. They can eat spiders, beetles, crickets, and other insects, small mice, snails, other lizards, and frogs, but they are slightly omnivorous. And as far as their development, the female guards the eggs, and this can increase the number that make it to adulthood. They lay six to 14 eggs. The females care for the nest by controlling moisture and heat. Their preferred nesting area is a somewhat rotted log with adequate moisture for nesting, and the eggs hatch in late summer. 
The brightly colored tail attracts the predator's attention away from the rest of the skink's body. And we already talked about the autotomy of the tail and how they can shed it. So while the predator is distracted by that still moving tail, the skink can make its escape. At maturity, the blue of the tail may fade. Different ways that the skinks support the ecosystem. They can help control populations of insects and other arthropods in the area that they are found. They are also a host species for common chiggers, which are mites that have not yet reached adulthood. They are also an important part of the food web to their predators, which include birds, snakes, moles, foxes, possums, raccoons, and cats. Male skinks may fight among themselves to establish or defend territory. Along with being able to shed their tails, skinks also excel at hiding under objects and in crevices to escape predators. Biting is also used as a defense. The conservation status of the common five-line skink is least concern. Some of their populations occur in small clusters, and those populations could easily be endangered if their habitat is destroyed. This video is dedicated to Camp Kaisok and the friends of Camp Kaisok, who maintain its wildness and beauty. Come and join us at the new Nature Center, and let's see what we can learn together.